What's going on, everybody? This is Sean with Strangeland Oddities. We're at the New Jersey Horror Con with Andrew Devov. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Um, so, in the first Wishmaster, what was it like working with the icons, Robert oh, England, oh, Kane Hodder, oh, and Tony Todd? Oh, what a treat. What a treat for, uh, for a young actor, uh, you know, coming up. Had done a couple of things, uh, but to, uh, to get the lead sort of... Uh, you know, I, I want to call him a lead uh, uh, actor, but but really a villain uh, was absolutely wonderful. And the fact that uh, that Robert England, uh, Tony Todd, Kane Hodder, Reggie Bannister, uh, Buck Flowers, I mean, I I, I, I I go on. The fact that they showed up and were so uh, so willing to help make this work uh, to this day, it uh, it means a lot to me. And every time uh, I see every, each and every one of them. Uh, not Buck Flowers, of course. Uh, we're missing him. He's uh, he's gone. But uh, it's all it's as if uh, you know we had just finished the movie a week ago and we catch up and uh, we're still all of us, even though we we don't hang out. You know, uh, we're still friends. We see each other at cons and so you know. I just uh, to this day, I uh, a thousand thanks for for them showing up. Yeah, that's one thing that Bill Moses says. He says the reason he loves doing horror cons because he gets to meet all of his friends that he hasn't seen in a long yeah, time. Yeah. Um, now, I was reading that uh, you speak eight different languages. Yes, yeah. Um, now, a uh, fan question. Uh, someone wanted you to say in, in the gin voice of uh, Wishmaster, be careful what you wish for in eight different languages. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to write that one in. <laughs> I, I would have loved to get that up front, and I would have, uh, would have made sure everything was correct, but... Uh, uh, yeah. If you I, uh, just want to do English, that's fine. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've done numerous, like, TV roles like CSI Miami, uh, Criminal Minds, Law & Order, SVU. You've been on Burn Notice, Walker, Lost, which is a very popular series. Mm. Um, you just did The Blacklist and many, many more. What's your favorite television role to, to play? You know, um, I, I you know you mentioned CSI Miami. Uh, I, I, I had a I had a fun time on that, and, and, and as you know, and as as the fans know, I tend to I tend to do a lot of the uh, uh, nefarious characters, the, the the bad guy, as it as it were, uh, and I uh, have a lot of fun doing that. I just uh, you know, for instance, meeting David Caruso was a real treat. He was a gentleman. I love David. Oh, Caruso. he's he's wonderful. He was wonderful to work with, and um, and so just just the fact that uh, you know. Uh, an actor's uh, a sort of life and lifestyle is all about you know what's what's coming next um, and keeping your fingers crossed for it. And so uh, when 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 we land roles, it's like wow, you know, we're we're kids again and we're in seventh mm -hmm. heaven, and and it's it's almost like uh, each time out, you don't you don't expect to get the role, and then uh, then you do, and it's uh, all over again. It's like uh, you know Christmas Day opening up presents and all that. So. Oh, it's it's wonderful, and I I truly do enjoy uh, uh, playing the bad guy, the quote unquote bad guy. <laughs> really do in all of them. And you do a damn good job at it too. Well, thank you. And and I, and, and and just to, to sort of round off the, the the question, I really love doing the accents. I, I love uh, it, it's sort of uh, I liken it to um, Wishmaster was interesting. It was it was a bit intimidating, uh, knowing that y you know you you're you're presenting this 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 regal genie and and you better bring it and <laughs> and so there, there's a bit of nervousness the mask helped uh, to hide that and so in a sense um, doing the accents is also kind of a masking the real me and so I get to travel away from me and and explore uh, other characters person uh, personages personalities and so um, but as I say it all hinges for me on on being the uh, the antagonist Right. Now, you were in the Wishmaster 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason you didn't do the other ones? Well, I won't, uh, I won't uh, uh, get too far into, uh, uh, you know, uh, speaking ill of, uh, of, of 3 and 4, but it, it just didn't seem to me that, uh, that uh, from what I read and from what, uh, what we had discussed, it didn't seem like they were investing um, them sort of the, uh, the love that uh, the first two had, right. and and by love I mean I mean you know this is about the fans and it's about um, uh, continuing a tradition, if you will, a legacy, 
uh, that was established certainly by the first one and, and, and the second one. And then to really steal the, uh, the joy from the crowd, I thought, by not giving them um, special effects, by not making it more magic or, or at least attempting to make it more magic than the first two had been. I felt uh, I, I couldn't really be part of that. Right. So if they offered you uh, another Wishmaster role, would you take it? I would. Um, I, I would. I would. You know, keep my fingers crossed and hope that Lionsgate would do a, a number five. Um, and certainly, I would. Uh, I would take it, and uh, and we would talk. And as long as the the love for for the uh, the piece and for the uh, uh, the legacy of that, uh, I kind of dislike the word franchise, but. Right. Okay. So be it. Franchise. Uh, yeah, I would. I would certainly consider it. But but the love for it would have to be there. Now, with your your uh, role as Mikhail in the in the show Lost, which mm. became super popular, mm. um, did you expect that show to be as popular <laughs> as it is? And was it really <laughs> physical on your body playing the, the role? It was physical. Wonderfully physical. And and it and it's beautiful to to experience that while you're. You know, while you're submersed in a, in a character, let me put it this way. I didn't think I'd come back after stepping up into the lens and looking into it. I, I didn't think I'd be back. And so for me to, uh, <laughs> to go back, and I never knew it was sort of uh, um, every time. So, so I, think, I think what happened is, is uh, I think everyone was, was a bit surprised about how, how well the character was received. I think there was a bit of uh, trepidation as far as the, uh, the eye patch. Uh, the, the people might have thought uh, that uh, that was a bit uh, mm, overboard, perhaps. But uh, you know, if the character, if 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 it's grounded, if it's well written, which uh, Carlton Cuse and Mr. Lindelof and crew, um, they were wonderful about uh, really fleshing that that character out, patchy as I call him. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, I thank my lucky stars. It changed my life. It it changed my lifestyle. Uh, and uh, and just being on that island with uh, with my ohana, I have a lot of friends still there, nice. and uh, and I just uh, I, I keep in touch. And these are these are locals, and they were part of the magic. They made it magic. Nice. Mm. Now there's a fun fact that I found out about you that you have a um, a voiceover in two games, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops and mm -hmm. Call of Duty Black Ops Two. Mm -hmm. How, how was that? Well, it was wonderful. You know, I I, uh, I was also uh, uh, lucky enough to um, to actually do the, the 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 body work too. I had the you know the the, the light suit on, a little you know beaded suit, um, and that was uh, that was it was very cool. I, I don't know that I was uh, the first, but I, I believe I was the first character to do the, uh, the the body. In other words, the body was modeled after me. I was wearing the suit and to do the voice, and so it was uh, it was fun. It was fun, and it was physical as well, and uh, probably about the size of the room we're in now, um, and so it uh, it's amazing what uh, the uh, the sort of the landscape they can put down in an area this big. It, it just blew my mind. I I couldn't conceptualize what what it was going to become, what it was going to be, and when I did see it, I wow, I was I was amazed. Yeah. Nice. Now, I was also reading that you're an artist. Uh, you do sculpting and, I do. and oil painting. I do. Uh, do you just do it as a hobby? Do you sell it or? Um, I do, I do. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I'm wearing this ring. I made, I made this ring. Um, this is, uh, that's 200 hours of sculpting on that. That's two ounces of silver. And, uh, and I do sell that. I did a, uh, an updated version of it. Uh, and this is the, uh, the version with the garnet in the forehead. Uh, the garnet is the same cut as the uh, fire opal in the movie, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to implant that in his forehead. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so, so I, I, I do it really as an escape. Uh, art is an escape, uh, and, and uh, be it uh, acting or, or sculpting. This, as I say, was 200 hours. And sometimes oh, wow. I would uh, I would carve for ten hours a day because there, there you know there was nothing going on and, and so I would uh, sort of finish the day and look at it and to me it, it seemed that it hadn't changed and I would just it was, it was just <laughs> it was it was oppressive almost and but uh, but finally um, and, and and sculptors say I, I believe it was Michelangelo who said that he, he didn't sculpt as much as find. Uh, uh, the, the character of the stone and chip away what didn't need to be there and that's that's a cool way to look at it and so I 
Eventually, it, 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 it chipped away, it flaked away. I was using dental tools, and this was a jeweler's wax, first time carving in that. And, uh, and you know, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of so proud to be able to look at that. And, and Is there anywhere, place that your fans could buy it? Oh, yeah, you know, um, check, uh, check my Facebook page out. It has a connection, uh, official Andrew Deboff. And, uh, and I, uh, I support a lot of uh, charities. Uh, I do, uh, do a, a brew of beer called Gin's Hella Brew. Uh, oh. Coincidentally, and uh, and I uh, I've been pouring now for four years up at my home, Lake Arrowhead. So we do the brew fest up there. Uh, this year it'll be in August, August 11th, and uh, and I raise money for the Mountain Film and Theater Arts Committee, which gives scholarships to local high school kids to pursue their dreams in the arts. Oh, and uh, and so I am. I've decided to make a uh, an honest brewer of myself, and I'm uh, going to be getting a license and uh, opening up a brewery tap room. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. where, where's that going to be located? That'll be in Crestline, California. Crestline, California. And uh, I will be keeping uh, uh, the crowd uh, sort of posted uh, through my uh, uh, official Andrew Debaugh Facebook and Instagram, uh, same, same address. And, uh, you know, little by little. Right now I'm doing, I'm posting, uh, which gives me 30 days to, to put up a public notice about what I intend to do. And after which uh, another 15 or so days, maybe 20, I'll have the uh, the license. Um, long story short, there's there's a bit of trouble with the zoning issue, so I'm uh, I'm starting with a beer wholesaler's license. But I figure by this time, certainly next year, uh, my beer gins hella brew, and I have a a, a stout uh, that's called uh, Mystic Mast Black Rum Stout, and so those should be on the shelf by this time next year. Oh, nice. I'll keep everybody posted too. Excellent. Definitely got to look for that. And two more questions. Yeah. Um, now, can you tell your fans about your newest film, which is uh, Demons, mm. and you have one in the works called Blood Flower? 